What I typically tend to do now, and it works really, really well for me, is hire the person. Like, so I may have a need and I'll have a whole entire job description. I'll hire a person to fit the need. And really over the next three to six months, maybe even a year, is a trial to see what they can handle, what they like to handle, what they're good at, and what they're not good at. If you're not good at anything, you got to go. <laughs> if you're good at things that I need you for, essentially by the time that year is up, I, I will have created a role specifically for you. Welcome, blessed investors, to the Anti-Hustle Podcast, where I, Nicole Purvey, am live documenting my journey of growing my revenue to $100,000 per month using spiritual weapons given to me by God. Let's get free. Hello, hello, blessed investors. Welcome to the show. And you read that right. I am going to give you today. I'm giving away my structure. I'm telling you how I structure my $40,000 per month business. I'm giving you all the ins and outs. So for those of you who don't know, on this show, I am documenting my journey, live documenting my journey of how I'm taking my business from $40,000 a month to $100,000 a month. So a little while ago, I started this show a week ago, <laughs> over a week ago, like uh, last week. Okay. I started documenting this journey and I just started going in and I realized that I did not explain to you all how my business was structured so that you can have some context for how and why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. So I'm going to spend this week and next week explaining to you all the structure of my business my businesses really. Okay. And so on Monday, we went over the four types of businesses that I have that I also believe that every single entrepreneur should have these four types of businesses. And then the first business is a cash business, a business that has transactions every single day. I don't care how big, I don't care how small a business that is just heavy in cash transactions. Okay. So we talked a lot about that and how I structure my business, my heavy cash transactional business. Uh, for those of you who are new, I'm just going to give you a real quick uh, update or I should give you a real quick rewind. We'll go over the four types really quickly. I'm not going to go into them because I talked in depth about them on Monday. The first one is a cash business, a business that has a lot of cash. I don't want to say that has a lot of cash, that does a lot of transactions. It can be small. I don't care if you're selling, I don't know, socks. <laughs> you need a lot of transactions. The second type of business that you need is a wealth building business, a business that's actually going to add to your net worth. For me, the easiest type is real estate. The next type of business you need is a large ticket item business where the average sale is over $1,000, $2,000. This can be if you're an agent. This can be, for me, I broker hard money loans. When we close on a deal, we'll get a check for 4000 if it's a small little baby loan, $2,000. So you need a business that has large ticket items, that you sell large ticket items. And the last business is a hobby business. This business is good for your soul. It's good for your spirit. And if you just so happen to get good at it and it takes off and you're making a whole bunch of money, great. But also, like, let's keep... Let's call a spade a spade. It's a hobby business. You're only going to spend a little bit of time in it. For me, it's fashion. I am an Amazon influencer or wherever I can set up to be an influencer for fashion. It's a hobby business. I don't make no money from it <laughs> at all. But hey, if it pops off, pat the cell phone back. Okay. But this is this business is really good for the soul. Okay. So yesterday I went into a lot of detail about how I run my cash business, which is my real estate club, the Better Than Success Real Estate League. I founded it six years ago. And I talked about how I run the business from the member side, right? How the business is set up to where it dummy proofs the whole entire process of becoming a real estate investor. So I went through how I structured it and why my opportunity becoming a better than success real estate league member is a different opportunity It's not a mentorship and i talk about creating a point of difference 
and all of that. You can go back and watch that episode. It was really good. I had the pink hat on, so you can go and watch that. It's right on my page, but don't leave. Pay attention here, okay? Today, I'm still going to talk about how I structure this particular business, my cash business, my Better Than Success Real Estate League. I am going to talk about it from an internal standpoint. I'm going to tell you how I structure my business in terms of my staff and processes. It's actually not all that complicated. So we're going to go over that today. But before I get into that, I got a couple housekeeping items. Hey, real quick. If you love this episode, make sure you pick up a copy of my Christian-based business book, also called The Anti-Hustle, Unlocking the Secrets to Limitless Success Through Faith. Originally published in 2017, this is the revised edition with the exact spiritual principles and scriptures from the Bible I used to thrive as an entrepreneur back in 2017. And then after that, I used the same principles to grow a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio from zero dollars and build a $50,000 per month business to now on my way to $100,000 per month. Pick up your copy of The Anti-Hustle at theantihustlebook.com. Okay, so let's get into the structure of my business. A couple years ago, I read this book called Good to Great. Let me know in the chat if you read this book. Say Good to Great. Say G2G if you read this book. Here it is right here. I don't know if y'all know, but I collect books. I read this book um, probably like six years ago, then I read it again, like two years ago. One of the biggest takeaways that I got from this book was this whole concept about stop hiring people for a position. First, get the right people on the bus and then get them in the right seats. Okay. And for those of you who are not familiar with the book, Jim Collins, he did he, he did a study for like 10 years where he went and looked back over the past hundred years and looked at companies that he had a very specific definition that were good and companies that were great. And what was the difference? And there were some major underlying differences between these book, between these businesses, the businesses that were great, they first got the right people on the bus and then got them in the right seats. Okay. So that stuck with me. As a person who's not naturally great at hiring, I've struggled with this my whole entire entrepreneurship journey. Um, I've gotten a lot better at it. And what I typically tend to do now, and it works really, really well for me, is hire the person. Like, so I may have a need, right? Or I'll have a need and I'll have a whole entire job description for this need. I'll hire a person to fit the need. And really over the next, I would say three to six months, maybe even a year is a trial to see what they can handle, what they like to handle, what they're good at and what they're not good at. If you're not good at anything, you got to go. <laughs> if you're good at things that I need you for, essentially by the time that year is up, I, I will have created a role specifically for you. So I'm going to go through all the staff members that I have, and you're going to see that a lot of these roles we made up over time. We started off hiring them for one thing, and then I noticed like, okay, I know you really want to do this, but this is not your cup of tea. So we're going to, you know, put your strengths where they are the best, okay? And that seemed to really, really, really work out for me. So I want you to think about that as you are building your businesses and you're hiring more people, try not to have this rigid idea of what a job will be like corporate does and force people inside of a box because you may be missing out on an opportunity for them to bring you all sorts of goody goodness in terms of value and just being a great team player if they can operate in a space that serves their purpose that yet still serves your purpose right <laughs> for bringing them on you don't want to have somebody doing something that you don't need that doesn't make sense okay so i'm going to go through the staff that i have and i'm going to talk about the staff that i need now this is important for those of you who plan to follow this show along me you plan to follow me on this journey this is important because Later, probably next week, I'm going to get to talking about the pillars of the areas in which 
I am focusing and improving on in order to get me to hundred thousand dollars. Like I'm not, I did, you can't just wake up and be like, I want to do this and then don't change anything and then don't have a structure for the change. So I have an actual structure for the change, but you need to know the staff and the people that I have and the people that I need so that you can follow this journey along. Okay. Here are the staff members that I have. Yesterday I talked about how I have the real estate executives. They run all of our events. It's 11 of them. So I have essentially 11 affiliates that sell my business. I have 11 people who are salespeople, but equally as important as them being salespeople, they are also, they also run the events that we have for our members, all the trainings we have up to five. For those of you who missed it, we have up to five trainings per week. Okay. So they run the trainings, they run and host the trainings. Okay. These are all people who are verified real estate investors. They are members of the better than success real estate league, and they get training from me every week. So I train them to make sure that I impart my spirit of how I want to make sure that our members get the best value on them. I impart my spirit onto them so that they can properly run our events, host their own events and market and get more members of the better than success real estate league. Okay. So we got those 11 people. Then I'm going to move into my staff that I work with on a day to day basis. Some of these people are consultants and some of them are staff. So I'm not trying to like play nobody. <laughs> I don't work for you. <laughs> I am a consultant. I ain't trying to play nobody. I'm just kind of clumping everybody together. Okay. The first person is Irish. I talk about her all the time. Irish is my right hand ride or die. She is my VA, but she's also my ride or die. Like she is me. Let me, let me kind of, this is how I look at my role, right? My strengths are in two areas, visionary, and I'm a relatively good admin person, probably too much admin, right? And so I have two versions of duplicates of me. So this is a little trick that I figured out too. Some of you are running your business and you're like, I need another me. I need another me. And you're pulling your hair out, trying to find another you. I'm about to give you a game. You might not find another you, but if you can identify your strengths, you might find another you for those strengths. So it might be like three people that make up you. Does that make sense? That when I figured that out, cause I was like looking for a, another me for years. <laughs> like I just need another me. And then when I realized like, it's not going to be another me. If I can just like figure out what is my strength here? What's my strength there? Okay. These are my two, these are my two strengths. And then I can just, now it's easier to find. So my two strengths, like I said, is vision, visionary, big picture stuff and admin stuff. Irish is my admin me. The way that I like to be organized, Irish got it down. She understands how my brain works. That's my girl. The other me is the visionary me. Now, this person I have struggled with. I have struggled to hire for a long time. I finally found them. Okay. I'm not going to say their full name because it has nothing to do with me. I know you're thinking like, oh, she don't want to share. No, it doesn't. It has everything to do with the person who I met this person through. That person has a crazy personal life, the, the person I met this person through, that person has a crazy personal life that if a person, another person that's connected to that person knew that I was connected to this person, that other person would get mad and it would be, I'll, it would be bad. Okay. <laughs> it would be all bad. I hope that that made sense. I have just have to protect the innocent. That's really the answer to the question. So I just have to protect the innocent. My visionary me, this person is like, behind the scenes me 
Like, just so I can be out here tap dancing. So that person, we're going to give them a random initial. We're going to call them M. I love me some M, okay? M, I'll be like, okay, M, this is what I want to do. Da, 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 da. M be like, oh, cool. We got to do that. Da, 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 start disseminating tasks, telling people, setting up meetings that I don't even know that's happening. Da, 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 da. I just bought this personal and it's changed my life already. Already. I'm, I'm, I am might not talk to M for like three days. M come back like, yeah, I was working on da, 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 da. M is everything. M is everything. So far, I love M. So there's that. Okay, on to the next person. Now, oh, before I get to this other person, Irish has another VA under her because of her admin work is a lot. So she has a support person, okay? So she has another person under her who handles mainly when we do BTS events, it's two BTS people that run it. It's the admin person, which is Carleen. That's our other VA. And then it's one of the executives. So the executive is the mouthpiece and Carleen is in the background running everything, making sure everything is perfect. Okay. All right. Then the, net, the rest of these people are people, remember when I say you want to get people on the bus and you might feel like when they're on the bus that um, you start seeing their strengths and I started moving things around. Like, remember, you want to get them on the bus first and then get them in the right seats. So I noticed for all of these people, they came on for specific roles or specific things. And I was like, mm, you'd be better doing this. I need you to do this. So they have like this weird hot podge of jobs. <laughs> like I'm trying to force you to do this and you're getting on my nerves, but I like you doing that. And I don't need you not to do that no more. Okay. And so make sure that they're on the right bus. Again, here's the beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur. You can run your business however you want to run it. No one says you have to have a specific org chart. You got to have this type of job. You got to have that type of job. No one says it's got to be that way. You could do whatever you want. It is your show. Okay. So these next people, they have weird hodgepodge jobs. All right. So my mom, she runs, optimizes our YouTube videos. That's it. She doesn't do anything else. That's it. This optimizes our YouTube videos. Then I've got um, another person, Melissa. All she does is send me my real estate articles to cover for my news briefing. Because sometimes I don't have time to do it. And then be stressing me out. Like I'll spend a whole 30 minutes researching if I got to do it by myself. So she does that. She just sends me the articles. The next person is our graphic designer, Tiffany. That's, that's what she does. Uh, she's not a hodgepodge. That's what she does. She does all of our graphic design work. Okay. The next person is Julie. Julie writes all of our emails. That's it. And I'm doing the, like she'll pre, she'll, she's a writer. So she will write or proofread anything that I write. Like if it's long form stuff. So like, for instance, I'm writing a preface to this new version of the book, this revised version of the book. And she's going, I just wrote it. I went over it again today. And so I'm going to have her edit it. She knows how I talk. So honestly, I just, it, it looks perfect to me. She doesn't need to do anything, but I know I'm also a typo queen. I will figure out how to make a typo out of no way. So she goes over that. And then the last person, oh, no, we got two more people. Then we've got Nick. Nick handles all the technical stuff for all of our funnels and our YouTube ads. That's what he does. And then the last person is we have Alea. Alea books all of the speakers for when we have outside speakers come for our Wednesday night events. Um, and so a little while ago, Somebody was like, you make 40 grand a month. That's all, that's all I need. My overhead. Do you see how many people I employ? <laughs> that's not the people that, that's not, like I got house people. <laughs> I got a nanny. <laughs> okay. Um, so the big takeaways that I want you to get from this is 
Before I go there, I need to tell you the people that I need that I am desperately, like I am straight up going without right now. Like I'm, is a problem. The people that I need, I need a social media person. Honestly, I want to, um, I want to integrate our social media with our YouTube. I really kind of want a social media person and a YouTube person. I love my mom, but I got to figure out something else for her to do because there are some things that I need done with, um, the social media that integrate with the YouTube that she's not willing to do. (laughs) She's not willing to do. So I need a full on social media person. I need a video editor because right now I'm editing my own videos and I've just been having the worst luck with video editors for various reasons, various reasons. And last but not least, this person is not a need, but like once I get to a hundred grand a month, I need to hire a personal assistant here in California slash driver. Let me tell you why I need this person. Because I need stuff that I've been needing stuff around the house done. So like my nanny, she'll do some stuff for me sometimes, but I need somebody dedicated like record me. If I'm drive, if we're going somewhere, I need you to drive so I can be on my phone doing stuff. <laughs> also need the driver to take my nanny and my son to field trips. I'm not sending, I've made the decision. I'm not sending my son to school. These schools are dangerous places. School ain't what it used to be. So we're going to homeschool. So starting at three, which is coming up soon, I'm going to bring in a tutor. And this is all what I would like to do. If we get there, <laughs> if we don't get there, my son will be going to school. <laughs> but I really don't want to send my son to school. This is why I'm busting my hump. Like, um, this is why I'm busting my hump. I heard a song, it's a new song, it's a pop song of this guy that I never heard of, but he's got literally 5 million followers on Instagram. I don't even remember what his name was. And he's a huge star. And I don't know how um, I miss him, but he had a song that just released. I just, saw him today. He had a song and I saw a 10 second clip of the video and the words were something like, um, without you, this is all meaningless. And I started crying because I, that's how I feel about my son. Like as expensive as he is, why would I be like, and that's how I started before I had him. That's how I started feeling like I'm working, running, running around like a chicken with my head cut off for what? Like, and then I started thinking like, what if I just got my expenses all the way down and just like moved to Fiji? (laughs) Like, what am I doing all this for? (laughs) And now that he's here, I just think about like, sometimes I'll be thinking about like how I can't go out the way I wanted to and how restrictive my life is. And then I think to myself like, yeah, but without him, what would I be doing all this for? For real. I love that little boy. He crazy. He funny. He crazy. But I love that little boy. And um, I love his unborn children that I have not met yet too. So that's how I feel about that. All right. I forgot to tell y'all this show has a format. Okay. Um, I was supposed to mention it in the beginning, but most of you who are here, y'all already know about this this show. So the first thing uh, we already covered is what I'm working on for the day. The next thing we're going to talk about the good deed for the day. And the last thing is we're going to go over the scripture for, scripture for the day. This one is important. It's a good scripture. It's Gen- Genesis 128. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in, in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now, let me tell you how this relates to what we're talking about. One thing I love about Genesis 1 is it tells you how God set up a system to where as though he doesn't have to be working. Like that first week was a lot. So he set up a system in that first week that he don't got to do that over and over again. Okay. And In this line, he literally delegates one of the biggest responsibilities to us, which is 
be fruitful and increase in number. So he told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and increase in number. So I don't got to make y'all no more. So as you are setting up your business, I need you to think like God. I need you to think, hey, I'm doing this. The things that you're doing, how can I set it up to where though someone else can do this? I don't got to keep doing this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Set up standard operating procedures, document checklists. This show, I'll give you a perfect example, right? This show that I'm doing, I started realizing like at the end of last week, like it's a lot to remember. I'm like creating structure to the show. Let me create a checklist so that when I sit down, I know exactly everything I got to do so that I'm prepared. And so that's what I did. I created a checklist. I don't got to think about it over and over and over again. And so every episode, I go through the checklist, I check them off, I write what I need to write, all that stuff. So start making sure you create checklists for different processes in your business and think through the thought processes that you have, because you need to delegate. There's no, even the things that you love, you're going to have to delegate them. You're never going to be able to scale and get up to the next level. The same thing with me running my, having the executives run the events. I love doing this. I love educating people. I love doing what I do right now. Some of you have been following me for years. Y'all know I've been doing this in some form for years. I love doing this. But at the same time, I had to delegate, fam. I had to 100% delegate. Okay? Just like God said, all right, I made y'all too. Now y'all got to make the rest. I'm not doing no more. He delegated. Okay? So, all right. There's your scripture. Let's really quickly go through the good deed of the day. See, I told you I made a checklist and I ain't even really, this is my first time really following the checklist. I ain't really follow it. So we're going to get better at this. <laughs> um, good deed for the day. So we're going to do a small good deed every single solitary day. Every day, y'all. Every time we're here. The good deed for the day is we are going to text someone and compliment them. I want you to compliment someone, make it come from a really good place. Maybe it was somebody you saw online that looked nice and you scroll right by and you didn't give them a heart. Mommy! Hi. <laughs> All right. See you. Okay. Yes, I'm coming. I'm almost done. I run over time. Do you got a car? Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? So make sure that you give them a compliment. Text them and give them a compliment. All right, y'all. I love y'all. I most likely will see y'all tomorrow. I want y'all to have a great night. And remember, this is real important. Let's get free. Let's get free. Let's get free. This is what this is all about. Freedom from your job. Freedom from all the wild stuff that you don't want to be involved in no more. Freedom from not having money. Freedom from not building wealth. Freedom from not, maybe you want to be like me. You want to homeschool your kids. Freedom from that as well. Let's get free.